So um, before I talk about the image, I was kind of surprised to be uh, asked here because uh, I normally think that theatre is pretty rubbish at representing uh, conflict or war in any way at all. For me, war is uh, the kind of ultimate real experience, the kind of unintellectualizable, you had to be there uh, kind of thing. And um, theatre is incredibly, uh, it's an incredibly fake uh, medium, which is why I think um, a lot of the, uh, rep the kind of common representations we have of war are kind of fragments of kind of photographic fragments or physical fragments that come from this kind of traumatic uh, void, um, which is kind of uniquely impossible to create uh, in theatre without a lot of people screaming and shouting and being really, really, really awful. Uh, it's no surprise that the most successful play about theatre involves puppet horses uh, rather than any kind of real representation of um, what's going on. Um, nonetheless, I'm talking about theatre and war, so I'd better get on with it. Um, so, yeah, so our kind of common representations are, are, are uh, uh, tend to be kind of fragments that we get from the battlefield, photographs and things like that. And uh, in, in uh, 2015, I was making... Uh, a show with uh, the company I work with, Complicite, at the Schaubühne Theatre in uh, Berlin, and we were doing um, we were doing an adaptation of a, of a novel by Stefan Zweig, the uh, Austrian writer who killed himself in 1941, of his novel uh, Beware of Pity. Uh, I won't do it, pronounce it in German because I can't. Um, and what was kind of going on then at the time in 2015 was. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this production is because we were really struck at that time because the, uh, the migrant uh, crisis was one that was in the news uh, a lot and the war in Syria and, um, was being very, very heavily publicized and it was also the same time at which, um, uh, um, at which Russia was, in, was, was uh, invading Ukraine and, um, and there were lots of kind of photos everywhere, lots of photos of crises going on elsewhere and I was kind of struck by the blurb in this where it talked about the kind of uh, um, the immediacy of these images, the kind of contextless immediacy of these images which hit us now of uh, war and conflict and, um, and that these things appear much more real to us than, than uh, theatre can. Um, but the problem that seemed to be happening to us at the time was that we weren't able to make any sense or make any connection with these kind of images at all that they were things that we were looking at and I thought oh fucking hell I need to feel guilty about this photo and uh, and I don't know what to do about it and and uh, and actually what I found was that the immediacy of these images just served to actually distance you from the conflict rather than bring you uh, into it despite their kind of shock value um, and I think this is where theatre um, can work because the strength of theatre is the relationship between uh, the reality of actors standing in front of a, a willing or unwilling audience, just like I'm standing in front of you now, and the, uh, and the kind of complete falseness of what they're performing. And if we look at the stage here, there's a man in a glass box at the back of the stage, and he's wearing a blue kind of tin soldier's uh, uniform. Now, um, Oh my goodness, I haven't explained about the play, have I? Uh, the, it was based on the novel by Stefan Zweig, which is set on the eve of uh, the Second World War. It was written on the eve of the Second World War and is about a man telling a story to another man about a disaster that happened on the eve of the First World War. And it's a warning about Europe descending into war. And the photograph that we put at the back of that box was the photograph of um, Franz Ferdinand's jacket with a bullet hole in it, which you can still see in the military museum in Vienna right now. And in the theater, we said, this is the real jacket of Franz Ferdinand. This is a photograph of the jacket of Franz Ferdinand. And then out of that, we were able to start telling a fake story around this jacket. And the wonderful thing about theater here, you can see everyone's wearing modern clothes. Everyone's pushing chairs around. Um, we were able to create a fake story that meant that the audience started to imagine themselves in the position of, uh, of the characters in the story. And in a way that you do in theatre, you, um, 
when there's a fake, when there's a chair that represents a person or something like that, a fake thing, you uh, commit empathetically to what's going on. You start to make yourself vulnerable to a story you start to imagine. Um, and you forget the fact that it's fake and you forget the fact that everything's made up. And then suddenly at the end of this story, when this character commits this terrible act just before the outbreak of the First World War, and we flash up again the real image of um, Franz Ferdinand's jacket with a bullet hole in it, you suddenly feel, because you've, you've, let, you've made yourself vulnerable, you feel a relationship with this real object that you didn't feel before, with this real image that you didn't feel before. And what we did then in the play was we started to come forward through time. The museum display case started to bleed blood along the floor, and the images of Franz Ferdinand's jacket started to, um, started to flick through of images of conflict through time, as if that moment at the beginning of the First World War was the original sin that had set off a huge train of conflict that, um, that we now found our fel ourselves in engulfed in. Um, And so there was something about how theatre can create a context which allows you to invest in, uh, in these photographic kind of representations that are otherwise incredibly alienating that, um, that I wanted to talk about. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Cheers.